Well, hello again, and my name is Colin. And uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for telling me your concerns about the presentation and uh, the class that I gave you today or yesterday. And uh, I'm very happy to do this now to present a uh, debate class to you. And uh, the thing is, I think I wish we had more time at our interview, the first interview, to talk about um, my experience. Because although the lesson plan that I gave you initially was towards basic and intermediate students, um, I also have a lot of experience teaching uh, advanced level students. Uh, both at the high school that I've been teaching at for the past year and also at Avalon English Academy where I was the head teacher and I also taught the uh, high level students there. And one of the things that we did at, uh, at that class was we did a debate class together and uh, once a week actually for the entire year uh, we did a debate class and uh, I have a lot of experience both in formal and informal debate procedures and uh, it's, very, it's very useful for me to do this because um, I've done this a lot and also I have um, helped the top debate students at Avalon uh, who were very intelligent uh, young students uh, to prepare that team to compete at the Avalon Debate Championships. Um, so uh, this is a, I hope that you have this with you now, uh, maybe you're able to print it, uh, but this is a, a role play lesson plan. Um, I actually right now it is late and uh, because I've spent a lot of time thinking about what you requested, which is to present a class to uh, Bundam High School students that uh, includes all students, and that's very important to me because uh, debate classes are generally uh, geared towards the advanced students, but we also don't want the uh, more basic students to be quiet and feel like they're left beh behind. Uh, because that's not good for their confidence. Um, this is uh, a lesson plan towards uh, all students because it is informal. Um, to have one class and uh, to try and do a formal uh, debate procedure would not be possible, I think. Uh, maybe over two classes, I think. But for this class, which is to include all 38 students uh, with this debate topic, uh, this uh, this procedure is to include all students, so I, I hope it's okay for you. I'll go through it quickly for you. I think that you can read it and, and have a very good understanding of, of the class itself, but we'll review it really quick together. And uh, step one, of course, is to introduce or review the concepts of debate to the students. And that would be done, of course, with a PowerPoint presentation uh, before the class, and then I would present it uh, to the students. And uh, step two, which would be to present and explain the debate topic. And uh, that would, of course, be the liberalization of the student dress code. Uh, it would be very important that students understand the concept in full and the, the term liberalization, uh, which is a long word for some students. But number one, to ensure that we have a quick discussion and that all students understand what that debate topic is. Um, also, what we would do right away would be to have an open discussion uh, about both the, pro the pros and the cons of uh, liberalizing the uh, student dress code and it would be very we would do it separately first we would discuss uh, the pros or the benefits of this topic and then we would move on to um, introducing 
the negative uh, consequences of uh, introducing uh, this particular uh, topic in school. Um, and it would be important that students understand that they're not choosing their favorite argument, but rather they are first uh, creating arguments that support the topic and then we would move to creating arguments that do not support the argument. Uh, and that would be very important that students understand that that is what a debate is. It's not choosing your favorite position, but rather you have been assigned a position and it's your goal which is to be the best debating team uh, together with your teammates. Uh, we would start, of course, with the pro or the benefits to supporting the argument, and then we would move on to the cons. Now, with the pros, uh, what we would do is I would do my best to uh, encourage uh, arguments from the class, and also it would be very important for the teacher to prepare research before the class. That is very important and I've learned that uh, when I was at Avalon English, that you must uh, research the topic in full so that uh, the students, that the arguments that they get, that's great, but they also may miss some very key points and it's the teacher's job to be very well prepared before the class so that the teacher can guide the students towards those key concepts. Um, I, on page one and page two, I've prepared eight questions and those questions help guide uh, the students towards uh, creating the best arguments that support the topic. And uh, moving on from there, we would, of course, we would, we would write them together on the board so that students are all, all of the students are understanding. And after we have created a list of the uh, pro arguments, of course, we would move on to the con and uh, also create a list from there. Um, the goal with this particular informal uh, debate procedure is after we have written down and discussed some arguments, what I would do would be I would pair all of the students together. So we would have groups of two and then they would each be, they would receive a, a piece of paper and uh, they would be assigned either pro or con argument and from there uh, they would brainstorm together. And um, also I think it would be very helpful if the students uh, if they took a couple of minutes and then also then they exchanged papers and uh, that would be very helpful to keep them uh, to keep ideas they've got a new piece of paper and uh, they can continue to look at the paper look at the arguments and hopefully that would be like the light bulb coming on to create new arguments um, after the students would have maybe 10 minutes to write down the arguments what I would do from there would be I would uh, choose uh, one pair of students, probably more confident students, and um, if, for example, if they had the, uh, the pro argument, uh, then what I would do was I would challenge them and I would say, well, I, on, this is under step six, and I would say, I support liberalizing school uniforms because it allows students to freely express themselves, which can allow students to be more creative. So if students are allowed to wear their individual outfits, they can be more creative. And for all students who have the topic fresh in mind, those students would realize right away well, if students can dress however they want, then maybe that could be a distraction to other students and other students may not be as efficient and able to 
concentrate on their studies, if that's the case. That would be a beautiful way to start the debate process. It would encourage those hard-working students to want to begin a debate right away. And also, that's a perfect example for the students who may not have the confidence or the English experience to realize that debating is possible for them too. And that is very important to me. It's my goal then that all students are able to participate because I think the most important